Welcome to Sailing Ruby Rose from the Saigon shipyard. It is boiling hot in here today. It's only eight o'clock in the morning as well. Today we are doing a Q&A, a patron Q&A. Lots of questions that they've asked, our fantastic patrons have asked, specifically about this boat, our boat, as well as Supernatural hole number one. There's a lot to unpack here. Keep watching it, it's gonna be fun. The questions are from our patrons. We put uh, something on our Discord server. We have a Discord server and there's a lot of people on there just asking questions, specifically in the Discord chat about the 1370. And that's where we're answering these questions. But we thought we'd take some time to bring the, the chat outside of Discord and run through stuff with you here. Now, as for a lot of our discussions about the 1370, there's some things we can't answer. This falls permanently to the remit of sea wind. But let me give you my impressions on certain parts of the boat that I can discuss. So question one, we want to talk about storage. A lot of questions about how much storage is there. And I will run through all this with you. But be aware that small things like storage, the theoretical storage of this boat, while you can't increase the volume inside it, you can increase how storage works. So for instance, there's discussion about if you take some of the storage from the starboard side hull you, and kind of remove it, it creates storage in the galley, which is underneath it, and which is more valuable. So there are discussions about what is going to happen. So while the storage, the volume is constant, how you move it around uh, is dynamic. And those are all these changes that are happening now. So you can see that this, this kind of inner bulkhead skin has been removed. The windows have been removed. Everything here has been removed and it's been removed so that they can go away and change it. So the whole thing about this is, this isn't about uh, the naval architect saying, right, this is the boat you're gonna get. I've finished, off I go. This is about her and her team saying, this isn't quite what we wanted. It hasn't worked exactly how we wanted it to. Now let's go back and make it perfect. And that is why I am super happy because every suggestion that I have come up with, they're like, okay, we'll change that. We'll try doing that. And it's not just me. There's the CEO, Richard Ward, who like literally has been designing boats for 30 years. He has come up with a lot of suggestions. He's like, actually, what about this? What about this? What about this shape? And it's little things that one person couldn't come up with. So Richard has come up with a lot of great ideas that will be changed from the theoretical application as to how this boat sails and looks and works inside to the practical aspects. And you can only do that by test sailing the boat. It, and that is the important thing that I did not realize the importance of understanding that a test sail is not just about does this boat sail well, it's about does it live well. So storage will change. Question two, uh, what work, if any, is being done on hull one? As you can see, lots. Panels gonna be removed, panels removed, panels removed, things removed all the time. Lots of things being removed and the list is extensive. Not because it's broken, but because it could be slightly better and it's making minor improvements. This is exactly what we did in 2019 with all these boat reviews. You can turn and say, I want a handheld there. I can look at this. I remember looking at uh, the Maverick 440 and thinking there are some amazing ideas in there. And that's where we got the idea for our workshop to have a dedicated workshop the Maverick 440, taking ideas from the exquisite X5 and thinking, Christ, that's a brilliant, what a brilliant idea. Taking ideas from Uchimere, and this is where we have literally plucked ideas from every kind of like good part of every Casaran built and thought, yeah, the, the stainless steel work of Leopard. And so there's lots, every Catamaran manufacturer has certain things that I really, really like, and that's where that's going. Question three. Uh, what issues, even if minor, did Nick observe on the test sail? There were some small problems with like the way the sails were set, all being fixed. It's just a small adjustment of lines that's being sorted out. Actually, regarding the test sail, very, very few problems with sailing at all. I have no issue with the way that the sails are set. Those sails, those black carbon sails, brilliant for what they are. I don't think, I think it's fair to say they're not beginner's sails. They are very, very, very powerful and not forgiving because there's no stretch in them. And the idea is that you get increased performance to the lack of stretch, but it, it, they're not beginner's sails. So moving on to question four, because yeah, let's take a different scene, a different part of this. Question four, maintenance. When I look at the engine room, what do I think about maintenance? Actually, I'll take you back into the engine room. There is nothing that concerns me about the ability to get all around that engine, to change filters, to observe filters. And I think it's important I get in there. Okay, so the question about engine bay access, that's not just into the engine bay, but all around the engine bay. Well, let's deal with a couple of things that are um, super important to show you. And I'm gonna take this as an aside, as design. This is one of James's 
I think we're going to call them an Easter egg. I like Easter eggs. These, the, the guardrails that come across the stern, they all retract. They all retract. How good is that? Retractable guardrails. So basically, you haven't got these kind of like wires jamming around all over the deck. Perfect. Well done, James. A lovely little design feature. Anyway, let me show you engine bay access because I know that it's super important. First, gas strut. Second, step down. That, super important. Can you do this in a seaway? Yes, you can. Thirdly, step onto the engine bay hatch. Fourthly, another step, another step. So here I am, this is starboard side engine bay. So let me just point this up. Hatch, gas struts. Stainless steel bar protecting the rose joints on the steering mechanism. Second step, non-slip onto and above the engine. Fourth step there. So duk, 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 duk. easy to get into. Battery box there, covered, except for the isolator. So you don't have salt water. You, you protect it in part from salt water splashes. Same with the shore power. What else? This is what I would be looking for. Filtration system, water traps. Question five is about the workshop area in Ruby Rose 2 that has not been designed yet. It's still work in progress. I'm working with Mary Young and James to make sure that our design is exactly what we want from a workshop. And I'm going to tell you what we need from a workshop. We have to be able to sit down. It is very, very important for us because when I set off, before we started sailing, I always thought that workshops on a boat would be like me with like, like something out of Lord of the Rings, like banging a bloody great mallet or a hammer and kind of smithing stuff. It is not the case. Breakages on boats tend to be very small things, soldering, things that need micro, micro motor skills. And for that, I have to be sat with my elbows down, articulating lights so that they don't cast shadows. And so for us, the workshop is about something. What do I want? I want a seat. I want a vice. I want articulating lights. And I want the whole thing to fold away and look like a berth when it's not there. So all of my tools are kept in the same place. The weight is kept forward, that everything is there. I don't need the additional storage, but that's what I want. A workshop that turns into not a workshop and that we don't kind of cover the boat in tools. That is what my workshop is. I will get back to you, I promise, as soon as that design is finalized. So yes, workshop coming up. Uh, question six. Someone says, I'm not clear what is under the helm seats if you don't have an ice box. Now this I can show you. Under those helm seats, there is three inches of, there's, there's three inches, like 100 mil of foam insulation. So if you are, you know, passing through your marina, you can fill it with ice, fill it with beer. There is a very, very deep part. And then that deep part can take ice or beer or soft drinks. And there's a little shallow part, which will take other parts, other little things like mobile phones. But essentially it is a big storage space either to have a dedicated ice machine or second fridge or third fridge, or it is just a big insulated box, like a Yeti cooler. That's the best way I can describe it. It's like a bloody great Yeti with a seat over it. Not that we're endorsed by Yeti. Let me just drag this forward. Exactly. Bring this up. Okay. So we have insulating foam, a very, very, very large area there. That's going to be what? Two, and then two foot, two foot six by about two foot. So there's a huge storage area there and then a little recess there. Now this can be an ice machine or you can just have it as a space for inflatables, dive gear, fishing gear, snorkeling gear, whatever. Number seven says, I will be curious to see the space under the companionway, uh, the area that is under the galley counter cooktop that is being redesigned. So there's no point in me showing you this because it is going to, they're going to try, I believe, and actually get the space uh, into the galley and the storage into the galley rather than in the companionway area. But I will report back on that 100%. Uh, next question is about the anchor and anchor storage. How do you clean the anchor? We are having a salt water and a fresh water deck wash on the fore deck. We will literally clean it as it comes up. And things like when we were sailing in Queensland, that's super important to us to be able to just wash mud off an anchor. Are we having a cockpit enclosure? Probably, but not yet. We plan to sail in the sun, and I think that's something that we will add down the line once we work out where our sailing is going to be. I think that, you know, that at this point, I just want to get the boat finished. Cockpit enclosure will come down the line. The last final question is about fiddles. I do think this is the whole thing that I was saying about Richard Ward, the CEO, Miriam, getting on board, all these things. 
fiddles where there were maybe not enough fiddles or handholds where the handholds need to be in a different place or additional handholds, they are literally working through with that. And we are going to be on top of this. And I've already, not I, we as a kind of group between the CEO of the company, between Miriam, between James, between Phil, we've already said handhold could be better there, could be easier there, let's get that done there. So literally, there is a list of all these little amendments that we have to make, little modifications, and they are all going to get done in the very, very, well, over the course of the next coming weeks. So this is why this boat has been pulled apart so they can get all the bits done. So what did you think of that? Lots of questions, amazing questions from our patrons. I hope that we answered some of those for you. So look, we will be back as Ruby Rose goes into the final fit out. It is the 24th of April today, which essentially means we have about six weeks until Ruby Rose is launched. So that basically means that now we're going to move into the specifics of our fit out, talk to you about the electronics, because Supernatural, this is hole one, is very, very different to Ruby Rose 2. So as we get into that, we'll be talking about the differences, talking about why there are differences, talking about what we chose for an ocean growing blue water catamaran. Keep watching those episodes. It'll all be great. I'll see you again next week. Take care. Goodbye.